Hello viewers, welcome again to my channel, Second Math Tab, the solution to your math problems. This is WASI 2025 Core Mathematics for Private Candidates, Theory Question 12. So let's begin with the A. A drawer contains two types of pens of the same type except color. So there is a drawer, and inside the drawer, we have two categories of pens in it. Now, the number of blue pens in the drawer is three more than the square of the number of red pens. So with this, it is clear that the two kinds of pen inside the drawer are blue pens and red pens. But we are looking at their number. We are told that the number of blue pens in the drawer is three more than the square of the number of red pens. So obviously, there are more blue pens than red pens in the drawer. So if I represent the number of red pens as x, then how do I write three more than the square of the number of red pens. So that is three more than the square of the number of red pens. So now let's say I have a number five and I ask you to write a number which is three more than five. What would the number be? So three more than five, the number will be eight. So how did we get the eight? Because we are looking for a number that is three more than five. We just added 3 to the original number. So 5 plus 3, that is 8. By this time, we are looking at a number that is 3 more than the square of the number of red pins. So that is the reason why we squared the x before we added the 3. Now the next step. The probability of selecting at random a red pen from the drawer is 20%. So at this point, we are looking at the probability of selecting a red pen from the drawer. So to find or to calculate the probability of selecting a red pen, first of all, we need a total number of pens in the drawer. Also known as the sample space. So let's find it an expression for the total number of pens in the drawer. So the total number of pens in the drawer, that will be the number of blue pens plus the number of red pens. So how many blue pens are in the drawer? So for the blue pens, we have x squared plus three and then for the number of red pens we have x so this can be also written as x squared plus x plus three so there is the expression for the total number of pens in the drawer now we are looking at the probability of selecting a red pen from the drawer so the probability of selecting a red pen will be equal to the number of red pens divided by the sample space. The sample space, also known as the total number of pens in the drawer. So what is the probability of selecting at random a red pen from the drawer? We're told that the probability of selecting at random a red pen from the drawer is 20%. So the probability has been given as 20%. What is the number of red pens? The number of red pens here is x. And then the expression for the sample space, that is the total number of pens in the drawer. We have x squared plus x plus 3. Remember, 20% can be expressed as a common fraction. That is 20 out of Hundred and twenty out of hundred is a common fraction, which is not in the lowest form. So what will be the lowest form? Twenty will go here one. Twenty goes here five. So the lowest form is one out of five. So in place of twenty percent, I substitute one out of five. So this should be called x on x squared plus x plus three. 
Now, what are we looking for? We are looking for x. So, what do we do? So, we can cross multiply. So, let's do the cross multiplication. So now the denominator here is x squared plus x plus 3 multiplying the numerator. So we get x squared plus x plus 3. And also this denominator, which is 5 multiplying the numerator, 5 multiplied by x, that is 5x. You can see that we are getting a quadratic equation. So let's rearrange and equate everything to 0. So we have x squared plus x minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. So we can still simplify. x minus 5x, that is minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. So we now have our quadratic equation. So what we do, let's factorize this quadratic expression. So the coefficient of x squared is 1, the, the constant here is 3. 1 multiplied by 3, that is 3. We are looking for factors of positive 3 such like that uh, when we sum them up, that should give us negative 4. In other words, we are looking at two numbers such like that when we multiply them, it should give us positive 3. But when we add them up, it should give us negative 4. So can you tell us the number? Yes, so the number is minus 1 minus 3 minus 1 minus because minus 1 multiplying minus 3 that is positive 3 then minus 1 plus minus 3 that is minus 4 so we have x squared so in place of minus 4x we substitute minus x minus 3x plus 3 equal to zero so x squared minus x minus 3x plus 3 is equal to zero so we can group them now for the first bracket what is the common factor so the common factor here is x so we factorize x out leaving x minus 1 and the second bracket the common factor is 3 leaving x minus 1 so we have x minus 1 x minus 1 then we have the outside factors x minus 3 this must be equal to 0 since we are looking for x we pick one of the factors equate to 0 and solve for x so x is 1 so that is the first value of x we also have x minus 3 is equal to 0 so x is equal to positive 3. So we want the number of blue paints and then the number of red paints. You want their specific number. Remember that we are told that if there is more than one red paint in the drawer, so inside the drawer, we have more than one red pin in the drawer. So between these two x values, which of them should be the number of red pins? So the number of red pins should be three. Because there are more than one red pin. So we are not going to pick this, we are going to pick three. So if the number of red pins is three, there ought to be the number of blue pins. So let's substitute three in place of this expression. So 3 exponent 2, that is 3 squared, that is 9. Then 9 plus 3, that is 12. So we have 3 red pens and then 12 blue pens in the drawer. So with this, can we solve the i? So i, we are looking for the number of blue pens. So the number of blue pens, we have 12 blue pens. Also, I, 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 
we are looking for the total number of pins. So for the total number of pins, that is total number of pins. So the total number of pins, that is the number of blue pins plus the number of red pins. So for the number of blue pins, we have 12. Number of red pins, we have 3. So 12 plus 3, that is 15 pins. So that is for the A. Okay, so also with the B, so we have a diagram in the diagram line AD. So this is line AD, this straight line. So line AD and line HE are parallel. We we'll see that they are parallel, they are moving in the same direction. Again, angle ABI, angle ABI. So the angle at B measures 139 degrees, and angle DCI. Angle D C I also measures 97 degrees. We have to find I angle F G I. So first of all, let's identify angle F G I. So angle F G I. We are looking at this angle. So I'm replacing angle F G I as X. Angle F G I as X. So, I'm also naming this angle, angle um, CBG as A. Now, remember that angles on the straight line sum up to 180 degrees. So, 139 plus A must be equal to 180 degrees. So, let's make it a subject. So we have 180 minus 139. So what is 180 minus 139? So that is 41 degrees. So angle A measures 41 degrees. What is the relationship between angle A and angle X? So they are corresponding angles. Why are they corresponding? So because these two lines are parallel to each other, line BI is a transversal. And you can see that angle X and angle A are located in the same position on the right hand side of the, of the transversal on the top. So because they are corresponding, we know that corresponding angles are equal. So angle A is equal to angle X. Cause Corresponding angles are equal. So we can say that A, so we know the value of A as what? 41. So we can say that X is equal to 41 degrees. But in the question, we are not asked to find X. We are asked to find the measure of angle F, G, I. So I, angle F, G, I, measures 41 degrees. So that is for the I. Now, how do we also calculate I, I? So with I, I, we are to find the measure of angle J, I, C. Angle G I C this angle. So I'm naming angle G I C as Y. Angle G I C as Y. So the next thing is that I can also represent this angle, angle B C I as let's say B. As B. Again, angles on the straight line sum up to 180 degrees. So B plus 97 must be equal to 180 degrees. We are looking for B. So let's make B the subject. So 180 
this time minus 97 that is 83 so b measures 83 degrees b measures 83 degrees again i'm also naming this angle as angle z angle z now what is the relationship between angle z and angle b again since line ad and line he are parallel that makes a uh, line ci a transversal again angle z and angle b are located in the same position they are corresponding they are all located on the left hand side of the transversal they are also located on the top so at the same position so they are corresponding so because of that we can also say that angle z is also equal to angle b the reason is that corresponding angles are equal so with this we can say that z measures 83 degrees so now we have a triangle so i'm naming the triangle so from triangle so i'm naming triangle g i f so x plus y plus z must be equal to 180 degrees because we know that the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees we are looking for g i c remember you are looking for g i c so you are looking for the value of y but what is the value of x so for x we have 41 For y, we had, we don't know the value of y, that is what we are looking for. What is the value of z? Z is 83. So these three angles must sum up to 180 degrees. So let's make y the subject. By grouping like terms, minus 41 minus 83. So what is the value of y? 180 minus 41 minus 83 56 degrees so y measures 56 degrees again we are looking for angle g i c so i i angle g i c that is 56 degrees i hope you enjoyed this lesson Please like, comment, and share the video. See you next time.